faith, spirituality, how mm-hmm. has our constant, and I do mean consistent, we have constantly, bit by bit, year by year, removed faith and spirituality from this nation, from our lives every day. We, talk, we take a little bit more back. We take a little bit more back. And in my opinion, I, it seems like I can draw a straight correlation from the more we took God out, the worse the heathenism started to get. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we started looking less and less like Jerusalem well, and more and more like Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, you know, Proverbs mm-hmm. 23 and 7 tells us, for, a, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so mm-hmm. is he. If mm-hmm. he eat and drink, say it to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So again, we have to be reflective of what you think and who you perceive yourself to be. That's that's your truth. That's in your heart. Preach, Doc. Preach. <laughs> I, I said it before, um, and I think I'm not sure if I said it in a previous episode or uh, on one of the tweets. And it is that's a plug. Okay, um, but. It's one of those things that I cannot. You you give me an agnostic, give me an agnostic. I can deal with, um, and I'll take that back. I can't deal with an agnostic. Give me an atheist. Mm. An atheist is a person outright. I do not believe in God. Give me someone of uh, of, of uh, give me a believer in God. I believe in God. I cannot stand agnostics. That is the cheapest crap on the planet to me they an agnostic is by definition a fence sitter so mm. they because they don't believe in they don't believe there's a god but they'll believe there's some kind of spiritual some kind of spirituality of the world dude you know oh, yeah what's what the, what the bible say be hot or cold mm. lukewarm i will spew you out and I tell and, and I told a buddy of mine, I believe that verse specifically put in there for agnostics. Mm. Pick a side, man. Pick a side. You either gonna believe in God or you not. But I, I, I can't do agnostics, but that's a meaning rank. Mm. With spirituality <clears throat> being so being being lessened to such an extent, it, it you really look at the world today and sadly. As soon as this crisis is over, right now everybody's on their knees, thoughts and prayers. We all know it. After every incident, it's thoughts and it's prayers. It is the blindness come back on. And then, as Doc on. says, we get back into that routine, yep. and, and we then we forget about God all over again. The the time, the most current time in this nation's history, when everyone became an American, when we all believed in God and, and everybody was going to church devoutly, was after 9-11. Mm-hmm. God That's consistently right. sends us these warning shots. Hey, get it together. <clears throat> hey, get it together. And for a very brief time, we do. We had a common enemy. Right mm-hmm. now, the enemy is within. So when the enemy is within, we separate we pray mm-hmm. because that's what some of us, of course, know to do. And some pick up because it's what they're told to do. But mm. when you have a common enemy, like what we experienced with the uh, attacks at 9-11, we all came together as a people because it wasn't an internal problem. It was an external problem. So we were able to say they and them mm-hmm. attacked us. Whereas right now we're saying you and them allowed them to hurt all of us. So when when we do that, we're basically infighting. Mm-hmm. We're having micro civil wars Re- in yes, our country. Yes, yeah, very and, very much so. And of course, is the, it, but this is this what's happening is what in our country, which is a good thing. It, while how things were set up in the United States when it comes to state laws. But I think some people need to understand that. I think it was one thing is a benefit to our country. We have so many freedoms. And the other thing is for some people who don't pay attention, uh, they fall into the mindset of being 
uh, follower and not having that or benefiting from that freedom that you can use is like when it comes to states' rights. If you do not like the way a state a state is ran, if you do not like how um, the laws are in that state, like for example, when it comes to this whole abortion thing is going to come up soon um, through the Supreme Court, it looks like how the the decision is going to come down is they're going to make it a state's issue, mm-hmm. the way it should be. And, yes, and so I think this is going to create a cascading effect probably in the future for other laws that come down the pipe, where it's really going to be more of state's issues. That well, this and it's like it which makes sense. Hey, if you are super pro-abortion, if you want to kill your baby, guess what? Go to California. Go live in California. Go live in a place that fits. It is not huh? killing a child. It is, it is pro-child. It is pro-choice. And pro-abortion. I call it pro-mortar. Pro-mortar. <laughs> hey, hey, Sorry. hey. It is pro-choice. You people are being insensitive and you're hurting a whole bunch of pansy alphabet want to be people out there look period point blank right like what Mm -hmm. frosty said if your choice is to terminate execute remove purge the essence of what you have created that is part of you and part of another person from the existence of time in this earth and it is based off of a choice that you feel you may or may not had or made, you're going to do what you want to do. That is the pure right as as a a human being. And Mm -hmm. because you have the privilege of living in America, that is part of your right. However, as a woman of God, as a member of the United States, as a taxpayer, it is my choice to Mm -hmm. say, I do not like that option being a part of the structure of my state. Therefore, I will choose to separate those actions from my state. And if another state chooses to pick that up, that is the state based off of the people, people's choice. You are a misogynist. How so? That's what they say whenever something don't go their way. They they thought they call you an ist or a phobe. Well, so and, and they mis- may so, call me a so either you're a misogynist or you're a lipophobe. <laughs> well, and, and and you know that might be the perspective that's one to be given, and I know it is definitely not you know widely accepted in my field for my perspectives to be so conservative. But the reality, I would definitely say this in case anyone may feel a bit touched that a mental health professional or counselor is feeling this way. My perspective in sessions isn't to delineate you from a path of your choosing my goal is to give you the perspective of choice and what that means and how those choices will affect you years to come because it is definitely and I I would say this based off of my personal account of dealing with women that have had it and women based off of the research and science if you choose to get an abortion you are affecting your body's ability to procreate and if there is a time down the road that you're choosing to procreate with the person that uh, that is of your choice, there is a high likability that you have damaged your body's ability to follow through with that function. And that is a reality if you are making that choice. And it is one that will potentially haunt you moving forward the rest of your childbearing life. Look, I didn't ask you to come in here and, and give me options and tell me the truth. I want you to tell me something that makes me feel better about having this abortion. And I've I've had clients that chose to get it. (laughs) And one of the realities is my, my Christian perspective doesn't want me to tell you, I think you did the great thing. However, as your therapist, I'm going to tell you, how do you feel about your choice? And at the end of the day, if you're able to live with that choice, then you're able to live with that choice. But Whether it's for one side or for another, my goal, again, is not to offer opinion. I can offer that right now because I'm not in session. But my goal isn't to offer opinion. It's to offer perspective. Mm. 
but how about that Doc Honey on the well, job? That I think that's where you end it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, that that that, that I, that's what I was gonna do. Um, man, thanks for turning me into another episode of Free of Mind Thinkers. You have been in the think tank with me, your main man, Big Brother Tucker, Little Brother Frosty, and our lovely Lady of the Hour. I'll repeat offender because she will be back. Wow. Doc, honey, we yeah. definitely appreciate y'all giving us your time and attention. And we hope you have learned something and freed your mind to think on your own. And as we say here at the Free Mind Thinkers, I always remember the motto of listen less, learn more. That's going to do it for us. See you on the other side. Wow. No call to Jesus. That's going to do it for this segment of Free Mind Thinkers. If you like what you heard, don't forget to hit that like button. If you want to hear more of it, go ahead, hit the subscribe while you're at it. And please feel free to comment on anything that you hear. And as we always say here at Free Mind Thinkers, listen less, learn more. Don't forget that you can find us on all your social media platforms. Getter, Gab, Rumble, Odyssey, Bit Shoot, and we are podcasts on several media platforms. Make sure you check out full episodes there in the podcast section or wherever you may get your favorite podcasts. Until the next time, y'all stay up.